appreciate you joining me today. I hope you're having a good day. We're going to be looking once again in the account of Moses at the burning bush. The hymn, today's hymn, is the hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Guide me, O Thou Great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but Thou art mighty. Hold me with Thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. I'd like to go and look at the next verses as well. Open now the crystal fountain. And as we think about the hymn, and we're thinking about Moses at the burning bush, I would ask you to think about the journey that Moses is embarking on. Open now the crystal fountain, whence the healing waters flow. Let the fiery, cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Bear me through the swelling current, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises I will ever give to thee. Songs of praises I will ever give to thee. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. The account of the burning bush is found in Exodus chapter 3. As Moses has now been in Midian for 40 years after fleeing Egypt, and here in the chapter, as uh, hopefully you're familiar with it, but as Moses looks and we have the bush that burns, but it is not consumed, and then the Lord speaks to him, tells him to take the sandals off of his feet, and we have the remainder of the account. In verse 10, as the Lord relays that the time for deliverance has come, that he has seen the oppression, verse 10, Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you, bring, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. And of course, we're talking about Mount Sinai. And I was just, I had never noticed before the language that the Lord uses there, that, this, that it's going to be a sign for them that when, they, when he has brought the people out of Egypt, that they were going to serve God on Mount Sinai. And so that makes us think about what's going to happen. Of course, after the, after the plagues, after the Passover, and, and as they cross the Red Sea and they, they come to Sinai. And, and we think about what happened on Sinai. As the Lord says, this is a sign for you. You'll come back to this mountain. And as Moses looked at the bush and it burned, or, or it burned, but it, it was not consumed. And, and you can tell he, it's just a, a dumbfounding sight. And in my notes, perhaps I shouldn't put it this way, because it, it was an astounding sight, the bush that burned. But, you know, when we look at what's going to happen on Sinai here in a few chapters, it almost looks like the whole mountain is on fire. And it's, it's written about a few different places, of course, one when it's happening, but, but elsewhere, I believe in the Psalms, it talks about us too, as it talks about the mountain just melting like wax, I, I believe is the figure that it uses, the sound of the trumpets and the cloud. Hebrews, Hebrews says that, it was, that Moses was terrified. And I guess the reason that I'm bringing all this up is you, you look at the bush that burns but is not consumed, and the Lord says, you're going to come back. You know what? You ain't seen nothing yet. You haven't seen anything yet. You're astounded that the bush burns, 
but is not consumed, just wait. Just wait. And Moses is going to be on that mountain 40 days, 40 nights. And on that mountain, as we think about our hymn now, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, and we recognize what was going to happen on that mountain, the law is going to be given. And, and here Moses is saying, basically, who am I? You know, who am I, and how am I going to guide these people, and, you know, all these things. And while Moses is thought of as a lawgiver, ultimately God's the lawgiver, um, that Moses was a type of he who would come after him. And so Moses, in that sense, served as mediator and was meant to point people to God. We could say the same thing about Jesus. Philip, show us the Father. What's Jesus say? How long have I been with you? Pointing people towards God. But God saying, you're going to come back to this mountain. And I understand you're, you're, af- you're afraid. He's afraid of going to Egypt. And you have hundreds of thousands of people who are going to come out of Egypt. It's how, how is this going to work? God says, I'm going to guide you. Come back to this mountain. There's going to be a sign. The law is going to be given. But of course, also at Sinai, we know, and to just think about the journey that Moses is on, the journey that he's embarking on. You know, as, again, to go through the plagues and appearing before Pharaoh, and eventually Pharaoh, you know, begging them to leave and Pharaoh chasing after them. You know, you have all those things, but then you, you know, you get into the journey going forward. And and you have the cloud, and you have the pillar, and you have the spies being sent into Canaan land, the spies coming back, giving a bad report, except for Joshua and Caleb. You have the wandering years in the wilderness. You have all of those things happening. And, and of course, Moses, because he strikes the rock at a certain point instead of speaking to it, and he's kept out of the promised land, but the Lord takes him up. He, he allows him to go up on top of Mount Pisgah and look out into the promised land. And Moses is going to Moses is going to pass there, and the Lord is going to bury him. And all that's to say, you think about this journey that he's on, and starting on Mount Sinai, and there's trouble from outside, and there's trouble from inside because at Sinai, what happens? They play the harlot. Moses comes down and he sees what his brethren have been doing, and and it's a sad scene. It's a sad scene, but at the same time, it's a it's a powerful scene that you're going to have trouble from outside, Pharaoh. You're going to have trouble from inside and a lack of discipline and disobedience, things along those lines. The Lord says, come back. You're going to come back to this mountain. You're going to worship. You shall serve God on this mountain. And that is what happens. That is what happens. That Moses, those with him, are going to serve God the law is going to be given, and it's, it's an amazing scene on Mount Sinai. And so we, we remember the hymn, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Moses, the most meek man on the face of the whole earth. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. We think about the manna, and we think about the true bread of heaven. Being Jesus Christ. Open now the crystal fountain. The rock that followed them, that rock that followed them was Christ. They all drank. The Lord was there. Whence the healing waters flow. flow. Let the fiery cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through, whether it be day or night. Strong deliverer. Be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan. The Lord guides us. Even in death, the Lord guides us all the journey through. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.